<clears throat> All right, so what's up everybody? Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me again. So today we're going to be talking about some Vaporesso AIO devices. And one of the reasons that I really like supporting Vaporesso, apart from them making, you know, the Vaporesso Gen, which is easily one of my favorite regulated mods of all time. Vaporesso is a platinum board member of the Vapor Technology Association, which means that they have donated well over a hundred thousand dollars to our legislative vaping battle here in the United States. They actively care about and contribute to us in the United States. Tony Abood from the Vapor Technology Association was just testifying a few days ago. He wouldn't be able to do things like that without the support of companies like Vaporesso. So yeah, I support companies that support advocacy. And with that said, today we're gonna be judging Vaporesso pretty hard on these AIOs. I've got three from their new PM range in front of me, the PM80, the PM80 SE, and the PM30. And I guess in order to get to know all of these just a little bit better, we're going to go up close, as we often do. That's right, quick short up, the closey time. Yeah, go. <clears throat> all right, yeehaw. Here we go with the Target PM series. So these all have a lot in common, but they're all just a little bit different in kind of really bizarre ways. First of all, none of them have any sort of airflow control. If you want to control your airflow, it's going to be by swapping out the coil heads. Yeah. All of the devices can use the GTX coil heads and they all come in, yeah, different resistances, right? Point 0.2, point 0.3, point, what is that? Six? Can't see. Yeah, point 0.6. <laughs> this is the point 0.8 and this is the 1.2. And as you go higher up on the resistance, you're gonna have a tighter draw on the coil head. So ideally, you'd be using the point 0.12s maybe in the PM30 to get more of a mouth to lump. I put the point 0.6 in the PM80 and it's honestly just way too tight for me. I would say, use the 0.2 or the 0.3 in the PM80 or the PM80 SE. Confused yet? All right, cool. That's just my recommendations, but honestly, you can use any coil head you want in any of these PM series devices. So real quick, the PM30, no display. It's the most simple of all of them. Internal 1200 mAh battery, clicky lighty up button, three and a half mil capacity on the pod. And this is the only pod that you fill from the top. It's got one of those Delta style, like spring loaded little fill guys. When you press this down, it opens it up on the inside of the tank. You can squeeze your bottle, let go, it closes that back up, click. One thing that they do all have in common is the magnetic pod. Another thing they all have in common is this graphic. This is just a sticker. This is literally just a sticker on here. Just a sticker and ah. Eh. That's kind of a bummer, right? I guess it does leave you the option to, if you wanna just tear this sticker off because most of them are, you know, fairly ugly. You could maybe cut a big old sticker out and just, you know, make this your own. Maybe if you had like, I don't know, a big Grim Army sticker or something, you could put it on there. PM30 is probably my least favorite out of the bunch. The PM30 is also the only one that supports USB-C for charging for some reason. Now my favorite one of the bunch is probably the PM80. It's just a rad little size and it hits like a sub ohm tank depending on what coil head you're using in it. I put the 0.6 coil head in here right now and it's honestly just a little bit too tight for a restricted lung and a little bit too loose for a mouth to lung on this device. It's easily got the coolest looking display, big color display, 16 watts. It's gonna show you everything that you need to know, your puff count, your resistance. It adjusts in 0.5 watt increments, which is just my favorite thing. It's got a nice big clicky fire button. Now the PM80 and the PM80 SE you fill from the bottom. It's even got a helpful little arrow open. And then what's also great is this just swivels right out of the way. So you can just bleh your liquid in there. I will say I do like that these pods are a clear color so you can clearly see how full it is. Haha, <laughs> see what I did there? And just comparing the airflow on the coil head, see this is the 0.6 and it's a little bit more restricted and then this is the 0.2 and it's much much more open. That's how you adjust your airflow, by swapping out the coil heads. Again, this is yeah, just a sticker. But it's got an internal 2000 ma or milliamp hour battery. It's a rad little compact design. And when you have a 0.2 or a 0.3 ohm coil head in here, the thing just, it vapes like a tiny little sub ohm tank. And unfortunately has a mini USB as opposed to a USB-C on here. And lastly, we got the PM80 SE, which again, this is just a sticker. This is just a mini USB. The display looks like a step backward to me. Still shows you what you need to know. In fact, I like that Vaporest 
also doesn't just have a bar like a battery bar that slowly depletes. It actually shows you the percentage, 83%. But what makes the SE the SE? Well, the SE uses a single 18650 battery as opposed to having an internal battery. Same magnetic pod, same filling system, same, you know, press fit sort of coil head in there. Oh, here, let me show you on a new one. This is the black and red one, which actually looks fairly dope, but again, still just a sticker. On a brand new one, you're going to remove the little sticker, pop out a coil head. Of course, if you were going to vape this, then you would put some liquid down in there to sort of get it primed. Two flat spots you can kind of see right there on the coil head, and that's going to line up with this. Keep that airflow facing at you. Just press them in, and then you can boop, fill it up. Now we're gonna put this all all back away because this is for somebody else. They just uh, they just don't know it yet. Also on the PM80 and the PM80 SE, the tanks are definitely interchangeable. Both the PM80 and the PM80 SE will also give you a recommended wattage. When you plug a coil head on here and I switch this one out to the 0.28 because I swapped it from the SE, it'll tell me 32 to 45 watts. And what I like to do to just maintain the life of my coil head a little bit is I go just under the recommended wattage. So if it says 32, I'll start it off at say 26, 26. Less wattage going through your coil head means you're just gonna get a longer life. If you find that it's not flavorful enough or warm enough for you, certainly crank up the wattage to whatever you want. So that's all of them, not a whole lot to it. They're fairly simple, straightforward devices with eh, maybe a few weird flaws. But but really the proof as they say is in the pudding <laughs> so let's get back out to normal view and let's uh let's see how they vape So for the sake of continuity, I've put the 0.6 ohm coil back in the PM80, I put the 0.2 ohm coil back in the PM80 SE, and we're still hanging in there with the 0.6 ohm coil in the PM30. There's nothing to adjust on the PM30, there's no airflow to adjust, there's no wattage up and down to adjust, so you kind of just get what you get. Like I said in the up close, this is probably my least favorite of all of them. Even though it's the only one that has a USB-C and a top fill, with the 0.6 GTX coil in here, you get a fairly open mouth to lung vape. With the 0.8, obviously it's gonna be a little bit tighter, like I said, and with the 0.12, it's going to be the ideal sort of, I don't know, much, much more restricted, tighter mouth to lung. I will say that all of these GTX coils taste real nice. Vapor Esso's always had real nice coil heads and they seem to be lasting me a nice long time as well. So the PM80 SE, yeah, it's the one that uses the 18650. This is the 0.2 ohm coil head in here. I have this loaded up with some uh, V-God Cubano and like I said, this just hits like you have a little sub-ohm tank, little tiny sub-ohm tank. It's kind of on par, in my opinion, with the other, like the Vupu Drag X AIOs, although this does not have any sort of 510 connection available for it. It's much less versatile than even like the Geek Vape Aegis Boost Plus. But with the 0.2 ohm coil head in here, the vape I get from it is awesome. exactly like a sub-ohm tank. In fact, I've only got this at about 35 watts right now, and the recommended wattage is between 45 and 60 watts. So let's just try like 54.5 watts. Yeah, that, that vapes great. But honestly, my favorite out of the three is probably going to be the PM80. Just, I, I love this tiny little size. It's perfect for driving in the car. It's perfect for like my bedside table. I love having the small size, but I also love having it hit like a sub-ohm tank. I also think the display is just much more pretty to look at. Now, as you saw in the up close, this is the 0.6 ohm coil, which is not ideal in my opinion for the PM80 or the 80SE. Those both offer you a lot more airflow on the sides and really you should be using like the 0.2 or the 0.3 ohm coils in this. Still a nice warm flavorful vape just a little bit too restricted for my tastes right now. But if I switch the 0.2 ohm over here and put it in the little PM80 now we really got something. Now, cons on this, I don't know why they didn't all use USB-C, like I said. They are kind of, eh, a little bit on the cheap side feeling. Don't feel real durable. It's it's a far cry from, the, you know, I hate keep coming back to it, but that Geek Vape Aegis Boost Plus is just so beefy and rugged. These feel 
Ah, yeah, a little bit cheap by comparison. That's not to say that they're low quality, they just feel thinner. They feel cheaper, cheaper materials all around. And that sticker, man, it, it's really just a sticker. These are the type of devices that I would recommend to vapors who want to have like a sub ohm type of experience, but don't want to carry around like something Goliath with like a huge sub ohm tank on it or like a giant RTA. I would also recommend these to people like current smokers or maybe current smokers who have just switched over to a Juul who maybe want something a little bit more flavorful, produces a little bit more vapor, but you're intimidated by sort of bigger mods and RTAs and things like that. This is a really great little stepping stone in between that like pod, maybe into a rebuildable, he here's what's in between, you know? As far as vape budget hands go, you're not gonna really need them for any of these PM80 series from Vaporesso. The PM80 and the PM80 SE are around 40 bucks, PM30 sits right around 30 bucks. So no real vape budget hands needed. Now, if we're gonna play the Aliens game where they come and take, or the FDA game, where they come and take everything I have, I have nothing left to vape. Is any of these gonna be something I seek out and buy right away? PM80, for sure. PM80 with a bunch of 0.2 ohm coil heads, awesome. This is something that I want. This is something I need. I just like having a tiny little banger that vapes like a sub ohm tank. So yeah, uh, it, it is what it is. It's the Vaporesso PM80 stuff. The PM80 is kind of my favorite. The SE I feel like is going to appeal to a lot more people because you can replace your own 18650s on the inside. Anyway, that's what I got for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Links are not allowed in the description. Thank you so much, YouTube. So you're going to have to use that Google Foo, but remember, no matter what anybody tells you, vaping is still at least 95% less harmful than burning combustible tobacco cigarettes. So yeah, you guys, absolutely. Let's keep on vaping. Tasty.